Last exposure to oral steroids was about 90 minutes before the assault. He reported using metandianone, also known as Dianabol, trademark name, and Trenbolone, e-sandwich. Later at home, the police also discovered What's up guys, Derek, moreplacemurdates.com. Today we are going to be talking about murder on fucking Trenbolone. Yes, indeed, we're talking about the Trenbolone sandwiches and Dianable. Interestingly enough, I have uh, my notification set on PubMed for quite a few different random words. Some of them include Trenbolone. <laughs> Some include like pretty much any compound of interest. If a study comes up that is obscure and new and interesting, I want to be, you know, I want to get notified about it and for the longest while i've been getting shitty trend balone articles for weeks and weeks and weeks on end for the past year i've been getting just dumb trend balone shit that is not even useful for a video you know at best it might be something about detection methods at worst it's something about something totally irrelevant like fucking fish underwater or Something like some fucking animal that somehow encountered Trenbolone in some weird circumstance. But now we have something quite interesting. We have indeed anabolic steroids and extreme violence. A case of murder after chronic intake and under acute influence of metandianone, also known as methandrostenolone, also known as dianabol, also known as Dibol. Yes, I remember all those fucking names. <laughs> and Trenbolone. So in this... Um, this was accepted March 25th, 2021, fresh off the fucking press about murder on trend. So for me, you know, when I think of roid rage, I think of like, I used to be under the impression that, well, I still am very under the impression that whatever your personality type is, gear will make it exacerbate it. So if you are generally a hostile person, Taking any kind of gear on top of it, especially trend, will make you a far more hostile person. Now, if you were a pretty chill guy and you're normally relaxed, are you going to become, you know, a fucking killer on trend and D-ball? Probably not. However, the hyper-vigilant, perpetually sympathetic-driven fucking trend baloney sandwich-induced state is not necessarily easy to deal with, even if you are a chill dude normally. In fact, it can make you quite paranoid and um, a little off your rocker in some circumstances. Now, some people, you know, get along just fine with it. They have no significant issues. I think a lot of guys don't even realize they have issues though when they're on it and they think, oh, I ran it just fine. Nothing went wrong. And it's like, in reality, they don't even understand like the way their actions are coming across to other people and how much different they're acting. And like, personally, I'm a pretty chill fucking dude. And when I took trend, I definitely was more on edge, definitely more paranoid, like unjustifiably so. Um, to the point that like, I've, you can never have a more paradoxical compound in that you, you feel like a God and like a fucking squeamish, terrified person at the same time. You literally think like fucking like whatever the worst case scenario that's like super, super obscure seems like a reality on enough trend. So anyways, in this, like, as far as the roid rage thing, do I think it's possible that somebody could go from a state of not willing to do something to willing to do something bad under the influence of anabolic androgenic steroids. I believe that's definitely the case. I believe you definitely can. So I think certain individuals probably shouldn't be touching the shit, you know? And obviously it goes back to the uh, statement earlier about if you are a, a individual who is already prone to flying off the handle, you know, this is the kind of individual that probably makes it up in a case, makes it into a case report like this. So here we have um, I'm going to go through skim a little bit. Basically, this is an introduction to who uses steroids. You know, people use it because it increases lean body mass, strength, aggressiveness, blah, blah, blah. Like, oh, no shit. Anabolic steroids are mostly available on the internet. Oh, wow. Go figure. Um, in most cases, these compounds are using dosages much higher than is what is recommended by the manufacturers. That is true. The therapeutic dosages for most of these compounds is far lower than what people are deploying. Interestingly enough, I believe the Trenbolone clinical dosage in females was like 76 milligrams. What was it? Like once every 10 days and then thereafter for like once a month or something. Quite a bit actually. If you think about the loading phase of Trenbolone, Hexyl, whatever the fuck the ester is for Parabolin being like 200 and something milligrams for 
in a month for a girl, you know, it's quite a fucking bit. But anyways, it's a bit of a side tangent, just an interesting little tidbit. And again, that was, you know, however many decades ago where, you know, hopefully that practice would not be deployed nowadays, obviously. So anyways, like the clinical dose for some of these compounds is like wildly different. Like you can find primabolin studies going up to like over a gram in fucking women, but then other studies you'll find some random compound that is barely used at, you know, less than 100 milligrams. So, you know, I don't always put a lot of weight in what the therapeutic dosage is because sometimes the therapeutic dosages don't even make fucking sense. But, you know, in general, it's a good framework, obviously, because it's not like these people are totally oblivious to what they're doing. So it's a bit uh, ridiculous to say that a pharmaceutical company is like dumb and we're smarter than them. <laughs> But anyways, so therapeutic uses are very limited. For example, in France, only testosterone and anthate is available after medical prescription. Side effects of steroids. When misused, prolonged subjects can develop psychiatric effects, which include antisocial lifestyle, disinhibition, frustration, psychosis, low-level self-confidence, childhood conduct disorders, delirium, depression, and aggressiveness. Um, let's see. Two weeks of uh, nandrol and decanoate caused a significant alteration in the density of serotonergic 5-HT1B and 5-HT2 receptors in the male Rat brain, a testosterone serotonin link was established, which could explain changes in emotional states and behavior. Um, a lot of this, I think, ties into estrogenic activity as well. It seems that anabolic steroids can modulate serotonin receptors activity, which will affect aggressiveness as it is associated to decreased serotonin neurotransmission. So anyways, they talk about like the uh, history of kind of uh, psychiatric effects in regards to anabolics. Then they get into the case report. So a 32-year-old man went to the police station some minutes after murdering his girlfriend. I haven't read this, by the way, yet. I've been saving it for this video. Uh, by inflicting several stabs with a kitchen knife. Holy fuck. He reported a dispute that started at home because he, she arrived late from work. She gave him a slap in the face for bad wording during the initial phase. But very rapidly, the man went nervous, excited, and took a knife to injure the neck, the face, the arms, and the back of his girlfriend. The man was a security agent who was not known to the police. There was no reported family history of mental illness. Relatives and witnesses did not report signs of violence before the homicide. Quite daily, he was practicing muscular improvement. He was practicing muscular improvement. That's quite a way to say he exercises. In a fitness center and confessed using anabolic steroids to enhance his athletic figure and to promote muscle growth. Last exposure to oral steroids was about 90 minutes before the assault. He reported using... Metandianone, also known as Dianabol, trademark name, and Trenbolone, e-sandwich. Later at home, the police also discovered tablets of clenbuterol and ampules of androtartal, also known as testosterone, enanthate. The exact reg regimen of the subject is unclear and the steroids were not submitted to analyses to verify both the composition and purity at the police station. Two vials of blood, vacutainer with gray top, uh, okay, never mind, containing sodium fluoride as preservative were collected about three and a half hours after the assault, corresponding to about five hours after oral administration of the Dianabol. Three weeks later, an experienced physician collected three strands of hair as close as possible from the scalp in the vertex region, black in color, three centimeters in length as the subject was short-haired. First, the blood was subjected to the standard toxicological screening. Ethanol was tested and blah, 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 blah. Uh, let's see. GHB was tested using gas chromatography and mass spectrometry on an Agilent 5971. Fucking clean, buddy. Comprehensive screening for pharmaceuticals and drugs of abuse, including NPS. A pr about 200 compounds was performed on blood using liquid chromatography with tandem mass spectrometry. Okay, so skipping down to the uh, hair analysis, because this is basically just detailing some, all of their testing methods and assays. Because there was a request to test for several anabolic steroids, a screening procedure already published was used. Um, 30 milligrams of finely cut hair, blah, 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 blah. Uh, let's see. Major validation of the analytical procedures for these two compounds, both in blood and hair, are presented in tables two and three. Um, results, finally. So GHB was within the physiological range. Um, ELSIA screenings were negative for pharmaceuticals and drugs of abuse. Screening of the blood by liquid chromatography with tandem mass spectrometry was negative except for Dianabol and Trenbolone. Dianabol and Trenbolone tested positive in blood at 32 and 9 nanograms per milliliter respectively. These concentrations are highly indicative that the murderer was under the influence of anabolic steroids at the time of the assault. Results are presented in Table 4. Very few data are available in the literature for steroid blood concentrations and particularly for Dianabol or Trenbolone. In a death after misuse of anabolic substances, 
Lemon et al. identified D ball in post mortem femoral blood at 8 nanograms per milliliter. It seems that the pharmacokinetic parameters of Trenbolone have not been established in humans, while the elimination half life. Half-life of D-ball is about three to six hours. Blood testosterone concentration was 0.9 nanograms per milliliter, which can be interpreted as physiological concentration. No clenbuterol was identified. In recent years, hair specimens have been proposed to document drug exposure in any situation in which a history of past uh, rather than recent drug use is, ex is requested. Obviously an expensive method of testing though, and is you know often not deployed in anti-doping regimens and whatnot. Testing head hair by segmentation allows establishing a retrospective calendar of an individual's drug use and the distinction between single and repetitive use. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So going all the way down, um, D-ball is an effective or anabolic steroid. Yes, indeed it is. The drug was once one of the most widely produced steroids by the Seba Pharmaceutical Company. If you haven't seen my video on Seba's advertisement for Dianabol, it's actually quite humorous and interesting. Recommend you check that out. I did it about... Um, I don't know, maybe like eight to nine months ago at this point. And you literally see like their advertising brochure, like, I don't know, insert that they want to, like think of when you see a commercial at nighttime and it's like fill in the blank drug. And then it says like 50 things at the end. It's like might fucking kill you. might make you puke, make, might make you shit yourself, might make you vomit uncontrollably, might make you fucking jump out a window. You know, all of these things, the, the Dianabol drug <laughs> advertisement uh, was kind of uh, interesting to see given the context we have now about steroids getting banned after, but you know, prior to them being banned, what, like how aggressive the fucking marketing was on the shit. So if my editor can put the card up to the Diana Ball Siba advertisement video, that would be good. And if they can't find it, then you might just have to search it a bit and just type in Diana Ball or D Ball. Should find it. Um, was one of the most widely produced steroids by Siba. Production use has decreased, have decreased sharply in the more recent years due to liver toxicity and the release of safer testosterone esters. Trenbolone parabolin is an anabolic steroid presented to be three times more powerful than testosterone and is a derivative of nandrolone. It can be bought as a parent, as parent drug in tablets or as esters such as acetate, enanthate, cyclohexyl methyl carbonate, undesalinate, or undecanoate in injectable forms. I have never in my life seen trendblown undesalinate or undecanoate and i don't think i've ever seen cyclohexyl methyl carbonate either because that does not seem to be the same is that the same ester as parabolin i don't recall but i recall it being uh i could have sworn it was a little bit different than this but anyways elimination half-life is much shorter when trend is not used as ester forms um none of these publications was dealing with a situation of violence obviously the murderer was under the influence of two steroids at the time of the assault the test in an alternative matrix, i.e. scalp hair, allowed confirming long-term abuse. This seems of major importance to establish a clear picture of drug involvement. It is not surprising. Wow, they have a fucking typo. It is not surprising that two steroids were identified at the same time as people who misuse steroids can take two or more different drugs and mix injectable and or oral preparations. It has been indicated in the literature that steroids can be taken in a cycle of 6 to 12 weeks with increasing doses followed by a decrease at the end of the cycle. In the same review, authors have pointed that anabolic steroids increase both irritability and aggression and that personality traits are overrepresented in steroid abusers. Yes, that is definitely the case. Personality traits are overrepresented. If I'm interpreting that correctly, like to me, that sounds like exactly like a perfect description of it. Like, and I would also find I get really short with people, like people I actually care about too, like family, friends, etc. You know, they'd say something, I'd just be like, I don't fucking care. Like, shut the fuck up, you know? Not a place you want to be in. Trend is pretty rough. Um, let's see. An association between misuse of anabolic steroids and irritability slash aggression. Abusers of steroids are more prone to be involved in... Oh, I'm reading the fucking conclusion. Regarding these results and current known effects of the long-term anabolic steroids, the effects of long-term anabolic steroids, which appear to be nevertheless variable across individuals, present case suggests an association between misuse of AAS and irritability aggression. Abusers of steroids are more prone to be involved in criminal acts, as demonstrated by epidemiological studies. However, in all these reports, none was supported by toxicological analyses, which seem to have a major importance in forensic science. The authors have presented analytical results on biological specimens collected from a subject under the influence of both Dianabol and Trenbolone and recommend analyses of blood and hair to pr prove an acute impairment and the negative impact of a possible misuse. In this case, Dibol and Trend were simultaneously detected in blood and hair, the combination of these two specimens allowed establishing the involvement of steroids at the time of the assault 
and the confirmation that the perpetrator was a long-term steroid misuser. So anyways, what is the moral of the story? Probably Trent is not your friend, you know? this Would this have happened on just D-Ball and not Trent? I don't know for certain, I cannot say. However, Trent definitely is on another level in terms of mental effects. Now, some people have no issues whatsoever. I speculate not only that it is in like one of its the main ways it drives its you know, weird paranoia is through the hyper vigilant state it puts you in through this heavy adrenergic signaling, I believe. However, I also believe the sleep deprivation on trend might play into it as well. Your ability to handle emotional stress and even respond in a way that is congruent with what you would otherwise feel is the best way to respond to an emotionally charged situation, severely diminished when you are low on good quality sleep. And on trend, we see the trend sweats at nighttime and the lack of high quality sleep. And then, you know, this is where I speculate that the kind of, uh, where the hypothetical beta amyloid plaque buildup may derive from partially when it comes to trend balloon use, you know, that obviously only shown in rodent models. However, in humans, I would not be surprised. It doesn't seem like a coincidence that humans, their sleep gets fucking ruined on trend. And then as a downstream consequence of that, you get worse sleep and then, you know, your whole life gets fucked up because your, your, your sleep quality is always terrible. You know, it's impossible to function on a high level on a day-to-day -day basis as well as handle emotional stress with, you know, a good level of rationale is impossible when you're severely sleep deprived on a perpetual basis. So I wouldn't be surprised if trend plays into that as well as the sympathetic drive that is inherently built into the compound. But that is where we're at. This is an interesting uh, tale of an individual who definitely shouldn't have been on gear to begin with. Now, obviously, I guess, ask yourself the same question before you get into something like this. Is this something that your personality can even handle? And think long and hard about your decision because some people just cannot take gear. You know, they end up in a position where they're abusing their fucking girlfriend or killing them apparently doing shit like that or you know taking out you know hostility on their family on their friends whatever it is you don't want to ruin relationships in your life or kill people in order to use trend baloney sandwich so i'm not obviously this is a hyper extreme example but at the same time you know trend is often over abused in my opinion and it is a very effective drug at what it does but it's certainly not necessary for the majority of individuals who are even, you know, performance enhanced athletes that are trying to push the envelope. It is very case specific and I do not believe it has a lot of applications for the majority of people. So that is today's video. You know, this is almost like, uh, I don't know, breaking news for bodybuilders or something. Like, you know, when you tune into the news on TV, you're expecting to see just like the worst thing that happened in the past week or whatever, or the past few days in the you know, mainstream world and whatnot. This is sort of like that, but for like hardcore, like fucking bodybuilding chemist dudes, you know, you see a random story about murder plus trend and obviously it's going to pique your interest. So hopefully you guys found the uh, pharmacology plus story relatively interesting and, um, you know, definitely is a example of what not to do if you are an individual who cannot afford to have their personality traits exaggerated in any extent. Do not touch this shit, not just trend. Like you should probably avoid gear in general, to be honest, because it could, you know, I'm not saying you're going to end up like a fucking murderer, but it certainly is not going to help, you know, your current situation if you are already mentally like on edge all the time. So anyways, take from that what you will. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplatesmoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram at moreplatesmoredates. Facebook, Snapchat, Pitch, you Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. My TRT clinic, it's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home, Gorilla Mind, nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode, pre-workout formulas. I designed myself from scratch, my recommended lab tests and diagnostics, and anything else I'm associated with, it's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.